Today we're looking at the M1 iPad and the M1 MacBook Pro. I'm going to give some predictions, so have a look at the date stamp there and see if I'm right or I'm wrong. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at some of the things we can do to expand the iPad. So this is not just going to be another iPad review like all the ones you've seen. You know, you open it, oh, there's the pen. No, we're going to look specifically at the hardware and what I think is going to be the future of how these are going to work together. to do is look at what is the difference between a tablet and a computer and will they ever become one so i've already done a review on the m1 macbook pro check it out if you want to know more about it but i had to buy this ipad when they announced it because this has an m1 chip in it so essentially the insides of this ipad are the same as the insides in the macbook pro so in the iPad Pro, the 256 or the 512 comes with 8 gigs of RAM. The 1 terabyte comes with 16 gigs of RAM. So we've got a very similar configuration, and it's all using a system on a chip, which is one chip that has everything on it. So it's not separate RAM or anything like that. These are about to receive a radical update. But what is the difference? When did these two blend together? So what makes a tablet? A tablet has touchscreen, obviously. Apple have said they're never going to put a touch screen on the MacBook Pros because people don't want to put their fingers on the screen. That's essentially what Steve Jobs said. Now, one of the advantages in this, of course, is we can use the pen and we can draw with this pen and this gives us pen pressure and enables us to draw nicely. The Apple Pencil does not work on the MacBook Pro. Now, there's a lot of things you can do on a computer that you can't do on this, right? Well. A lot of that changed when they came out with the Magic Keyboard. So if I take this keyboard and we pop it open right now, I pop my iPad onto here. So now it's mounted. So essentially a computer has some things that this doesn't have, right? So what we're really looking at is will the iPad replace the laptop? So essentially right now, we almost have a laptop here. What's the difference? There's a trackpad. Now this has a trackpad. They've enabled the, uh, if you look on the screen here, you can see there's a pointer. Through accessibility, they've enabled the pointer and also here's a keyboard. Pretty much almost as good as the keyboard on there and it's actually better than the keyboard that was on the 2016 MacBook Pro. We will move on from there. So this Magic Keyboard is more than a keyboard. What it is, it's actually a docking station. So now we have a Thunderbolt port on the bottom of here, which means, you know, we can plug in, of course, we can do charging and we can also connect some peripherals. Because what makes a computer a computer and not a tablet is a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, and the ability to plug in external peripherals. So here's the thing. When we attach this, We get our port on the side, but we also get the additional port over there. Well, that means that now we can do things like attach a drive. And we can have this plugged into the power while doing other things like a monitor. Let's have a look at that in a second. But first of all, let's try a drive. We plug this in. And then what we do is we open up the files. And we can see the drive there, Extreme SSD. And in case you guys are wondering, this is SanDisk Extreme SSD drive. And there we go, there's files. And I can tap on these files, I can see them. There's videos, there's photos, and everything. You know, I can read the PDFs, I can open these images. I can essentially work off that drive. So that's really interesting. What else can we do with that port? Right now, I've just connected my BenQ 27 inch monitor and I plugged in the Thunderbolt. All right, let's just plug this in and, and look at that. So now I have an external monitor. So I have a keyboard, I have a trackpad, I have a monitor. Now we already know we can apply another wireless keyboard or another mouse to this. So essentially at this point, what is the difference between using this and this? Or what's the difference between using this and a Mac Mini? 
All right, I've watched a few uh, tech tubers talking about, you know, doing reviews on the iPad Pro and they all seem to kind of go short of going there. So I'm gonna go there. Let's follow this through to a possible conclusion. So somebody is just gonna hack the iPad now that it has the same Apple Silicon on there and they're gonna put Big Sur on there and start running desktop apps. And technically a desktop app should work just as good as it does on a MacBook Pro because it's the same hardware on the inside. You've got a screen, you've got a mouse, you've got a keyboard, you've got a touch screen. So you've got even more than that. So this makes you wonder a little bit about the future of the MacBook Pro and the iPad. Where are these gonna mix? Now, you could hack that, crack it, get Big Sur running on there, but it's not necessarily the best solution. And the reason for that is because some of the mobile apps or the iPad apps are optimized for touch. In the desktop operating system or the bigger operating system, none of those are optimized for touch because Apple has never allowed touch, multi-touch on these before. But there is a type of touch if we look at the trackpad. We've got gesture support, multi-touch gestures, there's different things we can do. Even that touch bar that some people don't like gives us a certain amount of touch. Now, some of that could come through into the iPad, so we would have a certain amount of touch. Now, what about applications such as Adobe Photoshop? We have Adobe Photoshop on the desktop, and then we have the iPad version, which is getting more and more features, and eventually that's gonna be just as full featured as the Photoshop that we know. However, some of that is optimized for touch. So some of the controls, the buttons, the different things like that work. So what if Apple were to release a new update to the operating system it would be like a hybrid that would allow people to run certain desktop apps and certain mobile apps on an iPad. Now that doesn't seem so far fetched. After all, Microsoft did it with the Surface and Windows 10. So basically you've got a tablet, you attach it, now it turns into a computer. And the operating system also updates. You've got two parts of the operating system. Now I don't believe that Apple's gonna do it that way because Apple likes to come up with something more elegant. They're gonna come up with some kind of a better elegant solution. Now we've got WWDC coming in a week. So this is where I could see Apple pulling back the veil. All the pieces are there. Like it's a game of chess. They've been moving the pieces, slowly moving those pieces. If you look at the, um, you know, having file support, being able to plug in drives, being able to run peripherals, like the previous version, you could use a mouse or a Xbox controller. And slowly they're being, adding these little pieces into place and it's ready. Same on this side. Now we've just got, the Apple Silicon above, across both these devices, they're running exactly the same hardware. The only thing that is stopping this running desktop apps is the software. So I, I'm even gonna make a prediction that Apple is gonna make the first step. Maybe they're not gonna go all the way there at WWDC, but I have a feeling they're definitely gonna bring a step and watch as these lines start to become blurred. In my review of the MacBook Pro, I said, you know what, the inside is the same the outside hasn't changed yet. It's still using the old hardware from the old MacBook Pros. So, you know, the chassis, the keyboard, the way this is set up, it hasn't changed. And I told people, you know, hey, maybe you might wanna wait for the first update. Now, of course, I got attacked or criticized in the comments, like, well, you've gotta, you know, if you're waiting, you'll be waiting forever, you'll never get anything, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the typical things that, you know, you would say. But my point is, there's big changes ahead. So anyway, several years ago, I did a video using Lightroom on the iPad, and I was kind of saying, you know what, now for the first time, I can see this being a desktop replacement back then. I'll link that video underneath. Check that out, because it's interesting kind of seeing how things have progressed. So we're definitely at a point of these two merging and working together to a point where I don't even know we're gonna need a MacBook Pro in the future, or we're gonna have a MacBook Pro where we snap the top off and it's an iPad. So, what do you guys think about that? What are your predictions? Let me know in the comments and keep watching guys. I'm gonna be doing some reviews on 
Photoshop and Lightroom on the iPad, but I might wait till after WWDC to see what happens because I have a feeling things really might get shaken up next week. So anyway, guys, if you like this, do me a favor, smash the like button into dust. It helps us with the algorithm. And if you guys love tech and photography and graphic design, subscribe to Photoshop Cafe. You'll get a new video from me every week. Turn on the notifications. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.